Would you believe that it has been over 12 years since you and I started driving Go Fast X5s that have a high center of gravity, AMGs on stilts, and something very strange called a Cayenne? Now, admittedly, back then, I thought the world wasn't ready for an expensive, fast SUV, but apparently I was wrong and they can't get enough of it. But here we are moving into a new chapter of the world, and we are posed with another question. Is the world ready for a go-fast, pint-sized, budget crossover? Now, right from the top, we need to understand what makes this unusual. And the best starting point would be to look back at our Velocitaran DCT episode or our Elantran episode. There, we pull for the two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine and we put it in a Kona. Now, in this case, it's 276 horsepower or 289 pound feet of torque. Like those vehicles, they have this ridiculously named overboost mode called the N giggle smile mode or something like that. Either way, it's an overboost mode like in Porsches. It adds 10 more horsepower for a very short period of time. Now there's a couple of things that I find unusual about this vehicle that kind of go in a different direction from other go fast crossovers and SUVs, especially the expensive ones we've driven over the past 12 years. Here, it's only on offer as front wheel drive. There is no way to get it as all wheel drive, even with 276 horsepower. Uh, then unlike the Elantra N, it cannot be had with a six speed manual, only with the eight speed dual clutch. Now something interesting, a fun fact I found out from Albert Bierman, this same transmission, which they design engineer in house, they use it in Europe in diesels. Tells you a lot about the torque. Now, if we're gonna talk about diesels, we should probably talk about fuel economy. And here, it ain't great, but it ain't bad. 20, 27, 23 combined. Okay, so this is an unusual instance for us. Track again, we've driven that engine, but now in a taller package that's more practical. Uh, 3,340 pounds, or depending on your special weights and measures, 1,515 kilograms. With that, it's a normal raceway. That is completely buried. I gotta be honest, it, it's a different experience. It's more raw because your higher center of gravity, so that, that torque steer that, I spoke to Albert Bierman and I'll send that episode out to you guys. He gives you a lot of insight into why torque steer is a feature, not a bug. And here it's more of a feature than a bug. It gives this thing a lot of personality. And I would argue a big portion of that personality is the transmission. This is the eight speed wet dual clutch that we've experienced in so many other Hyundai Kia products. And here I gotta say it works well. It delivers power, but it changes the overall personality of a Kona. So if one gets in this thing and says, oh my God, I want a Kona. You know what, let me put it to you in a bit of a different light. The combination of this engine and transmission in a taller vehicle, it's fun, but it's something I think you need to get adjusted to the way it delivers power. It's not the kind of vehicle like the Elantra where you get into it, you put the hammer down and you feel at home. Here, you've got to change your expectations and your inputs. And no, it is not that time to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant, the, I uh, believe, 2022 Hyundai Kona N. Why? Because we have no pricing. Uh, you see, like the Elantra N, they are going to release pricing closer to the time these cars hit the market, which I believe is the end of 2021, very early 2022. Now, if I were taking a stab in the dark, my guess is somewhere between low 30s to mid 30s for a fully optioned car, which brings us to a very important point. Now, you and I have spoken about our good friend Mike E over at Hyundai. He is the product manager for the Elantra N. However, he is not the product manager for this vehicle. Instead, we must single out Trevor L. Uh, Trevor, a lovely man, rides motorcycles. The man has worked at many different car companies. He understands performance cars, but he doesn't understand what we want. He made a huge mistake 
This is a practical vehicle. This really, I don't see people taking this thing on a track. So why, Trevor L., why do we not have a sunroof, at least on offer, in a baby buggy? You are a married man with two children. You should understand this. You need a sunroof in this vehicle. So you know what I'm going to ask here. Please, in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, please come down like a ton of bricks on our friend Trevor L and say we need a sunroof in the Kona N. And uh, to add insult to injury, uh, he and I were having cigars with the uh, gentlemen that run N. They flew in from Korea for this event. And they reminded Trevor that the sunroof or Shibadak is on offer in the German market. So Trevor, make that change. Then there's driving dynamics, and that is the aspect that is absolutely the biggest difference with this over the Elantra N. So a little bit behind the scenes here, this sits at the same ride height as other Konings. So they didn't adjust the ride height like they do in the Elantra N. There it's like 15 or 20 mils lower than the standard Elantra N. And here the logic was, well, it's still a baby buggy. We still want utility, not a hatchback. So now that we understand that, how does it drive? And here, I have to say, it is surprisingly good. There is good control over all planes of motion. You do feel well, the higher center of gravity, especially, man, when that torque steer comes in. Now, putting aside all of that, the big question is, are people really gonna take this thing to a track? I don't think so. And that's why you and I have to focus on ride quality. And there, I'm gonna go so far as to saying, Albert Bierman and the gang, They've tuned the ride quality of these things to be a specific design feature of an Elantra N or a Kona N. Like for example, there's this like really bumpy ride. It's really a rough ride. I like it. People complain about it, but I believe that is kind of their signature. They design it and they know it's not perfect. You know what, forget that. Let's put all of that aside and ask a very honest question. What really competes with this thing? You could say lesser AMGs or lesser BMWs, but those, they're different in terms of equation and very different in terms of dollars. So that brings us back to the ride quality where there's nothing else close to the way this thing drives. And I have to say, I very much like the stiff ride quality about it. Then we have to press on to the steering and there it's direct, there's good feedback. I would argue the weighting is unusually good here. You do feel the torque steer, but then again, that's something that Hyundai, specifically Albert Beerman, is unapologetic about, and he is absolutely embracing it. Uh, then there are the brakes, 14.2 inch diameter rotors in the front, 12.4 in the back. And really what they've done here, they've kept the floating calipers. They're not Brembo's, they're not spending a lot of money on the brakes. They come from vehicles that have bigger brakes. In order to understand what we have learned today, we need to break this out into what we know and what we don't know. First, what we know. Hyundai has absolutely pilfered the perfectly imperfect personality of the Elantra N and applied it to a small crossover. However, they've gone a couple of steps further by choosing to make it only front wheel drive and keeping the ride height as the standard Kona, it is more perfectly imperfect. It is more raw. It is some more exhilarating experience because it's more raw. But that brings us to what we don't know. I don't know who this thing is designed for. I don't know who will buy it. Now granted, I'm not good at predicting these types of markets because 12 years ago, I thought people should have their head examined for buying very expensive, very fast, fancy SUVs. But apparently I was wrong with that prediction. So I may be wrong here in that I don't know who would buy this. So really, this is one grad experiment for both Hyundai as well as us car enthusiasts because I don't see this thing really having any competition. Anything close to it is 50 grand or above. And this, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, 35 grand or below. That's what makes it stand out along with the very raw, perfectly imperfect personality. Which brings us to the wish list. And here, aside from asking you guys to torment our good friend Trevor L. mercilessly for his poor decision of not offering a sunroof in this vehicle, 
perhaps two different trim levels. Right now there's only one trim level. How about the one we drove today without the sunroof? And how about one with the sunroof and the seats from the Elantra N? They are drastically different, perhaps even a different color choice on the inside. The only black option, not good. Please, Trevor, fix that. Uh, and this is Point Episode where I turn this around to you guys. Do a pine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I once again humbly request your help with the algorithm. What does that mean? Subscribe, notifications, but most importantly, it's all about like and sharing these episodes with your friends on your socials. Till I see you in the next episode, bis später.